On this episode of Arguing Art, we're going to discuss proportion. Micah, please tell everyone what proportion or scale is. Uh, well, think of it like a map. Okay. You got a scale of one inch equals 100 miles. That's scale. Um, you know, as you look at this, say this is, I don't know, 50 pixels high on your screen. Oh, it's not even in the screen, really. If this is 50 <laughs> pixels high on your screen, that's the proportion of this actual, what is that, eight inch tall uh, coffee pot to the size on your screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we'll take it into a little bit more defined art. Proportion is, that's a little easy. <laughs> uh, proportion mm -hmm. is the size of two things next to each other. Okay. So the proportion of this to this is much smaller. It's okay. half, right? So now, okay, now this may all seem really, really basic, like, yeah, you know, no shit, Micah. Well, okay. It's different, though, when you're actually drawing the pieces. Because if you were to draw this at a different proportion to the coffee mug or the coffee pot, it would feel off. Okay. Uh, the thing is, when you're creating art, you're sort of creating a, a uh, like a fantasy world. Actually, if you watch Bob Ross, which I've been watching a lot of Bob Ross lately, uh, he talks about how you're creating a world that you get to decide what everything is. Now, and in his world, everything's a happy little everything's something. Everything's happy. Oh, I, I can <laughs> I love Bob watch Ross. I genuinely hours. do. Oh yeah. Just um, add a happy little tree. I mean, they're audio too. Like you can pick up the sound of every brush stroke. Mm -hmm. It's there's something rhythmic in that too. You there know. Is? Um. Anyway. Uh, so when you create a world, you, you do create, um, you create like this, like, like a set of rules Okay. and you're asking people to buy into your rules in, in theater or movies, um, more, you, you would call it a uh, suspension of disbelief. Okay. You know, like James Bond, no, no way that could ever really happen, you know, but you are willing to suspend that disbelief. Now, if you set up a, a set of rules for a world and then something doesn't play by it, okay. then you're totally throwing your viewer off because you're not being true to the rules you've already set up. Okay. Now, in reference to proportion, if we draw everything on, on this screen proportionate, except for the coffee mug, which is, you know, quite a bit bigger, um, because everything is proportionate to each other, because everything is to scale, they're going to think that that coffee mug is actually bigger in the real, real world. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the benefits of that would be to, uh, um, it, it would draw more emphasis to it. You can create emphasis based off of proportion or scale. Uh, bigger things tend to draw the eye more, especially if they're inordinately bigger, which a bigger coffee mug would be. Uh, that's also a way to help you create a sense of three dimensions. For instance, well, these are fairly similar size. We'll do that. Okay. So they're it's pretty close in size here. We move this down here. Ah, it kind of works. Um, but now this is bigger than okay. this because that is actually closer in the foreground. And you get that sense of dimension because this is smaller. Okay. That's not the only way to do it, or that's like one part of creating three dimensions, but um, that proportion and scale in relation to each other is a way to create emphasis. It's a way to, uh, so emphasis is drawing attention to a certain piece. It's a way to um, create a sense of 3D. Okay. Or one part of it. Oh, uh, on the emphasis thing, I think a really good example of that is, um, uh, again, religious paintings. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, and I, I got one in my head that I can picture, but I can't remember who did it. Uh, but it's... Um, it's actually a good example of serpentine work, too. But it's uh, the Mother Mary holding the baby Jesus and uh, the flock of seagulls all around. Not seagulls, sheep all flock around. Of seagulls. <laughs> I know, that's how I said it. <laughs> the shepherds and the wise men all around him uh, looking at the baby Jesus, right? Well, if the, uh, if the guys are like this tall in the piece, Mother Mary is probably about this tall. Okay. 
And the reason they did that is because that the really, really important part of that piece is Mary holding the baby Jesus. Okay. As opposed to these guys. So that's a good way to put emphasis it by, is by manipulating this proportion of this scale. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, another thing this reminded me of is um, in the story Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that they create some type of strangeness immediately is by throwing everything out of proportion. Exactly. She goes down into the rabbit hole. She takes the substance that shrinks her in scale yep. and proportions are completely thrown out of whack. They've created a new world yep. and it has its own feel. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to take it in relation uh, to, to horror films, uh, one of the things that are really scary about horror films is a sense of discordance. Okay. Like really, really scary movies, uh, most of the time, have like a really sweet, like, okay, why are creepy or kids in horror films so scary when they're the bad guys? Because you don't expect that from kids. Mm -hmm. It's not playing in that world that you, you come to anticipate. Okay. And a lot of times when you mess with proportion, you can create that sense of off kilterness. Okay. Or can you want this, I guess, um, by manipulating scale. Like a like a giant creepy shadow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a great uh, sort of crime noir sort mm -hmm. of reference or uh, film noir too. If you haven't checked in film noir, I highly recommend it. Mm. Um, I think this is also a good place to point out that the scale of a piece uh, as a whole is also a good or is is also like also comes into play. Okay. Um, there are a surprising amount of very small pieces that are very well known. Uh, Mona Lisa isn't very big. Um, Starry Night by Van Gogh is only about yay big. But when you walk into a room and there is, say you've got Starry Night, which is this big, right? And then yeah. you've got like a, a, a Lichtenstein. Oh, with, yeah. Lichtenstein was, even his uh, canvas pieces are basically on the size of murals. I mean, we're talking... 25 feet by 40 feet, you know what you're going to be looking at. It's the Lichtenstein because that, there's that sort of overbearing, overwhelming sense of awe that you get just by, you know, damn, that's huge. Yeah. You know? Uh, and so I think scale comes into play in that sense, too, because a lot of times that uh, a large piece will carry a heavier weight in, okay. in its message simply because it is larger. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Well... I think excellent elaboration, explanation. Another one of these principles that sounds really simple. It's easy to understand. It is. But there's a lot more that can go into it. And it, it can apply, make a lot of difference in your work of art. Well, and you know, that's kind of the series of the, or the, the point of this series is these are things that people notice anyhow. It, we're just helping them to understand what those different elements or those principles really are and, and how they affect a piece. So I'm sure most of you guys have noticed the scales in a piece when you look at it, but now you, maybe you'll be a little bit more conscious of it. Yep. Be able to identify, elaborate, and uh, comment on our site. Yes, comment on our site, arguingart.com. If you're watching this on another video site, definitely come check it out. That's where the meat of the conversation is. Tons of articles, videos, and, and us.